Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hi, I'm Jennifer Savino and welcome to Bite Me, where I travel around the Capital District talking with people who were bitten by the entrepreneurial bug and then they decided to start their own business in the food or beverage industry. Today we're at the Broadway Pub and Grill right in the heart of downtown Troy. Just recently opened, the Broadway Pub and Grill specializes in American Mexican fare. They've got great decor and a wonderful drink selection. Do you love live music? You definitely want to get down here and check it out. They've always got live bands, um, guitarists, jazz bands, tons of different genres. And do you think you're the next lead singer? Head on down Tuesday nights for open mic night where you can come down and show us what you got. Now let's head on inside to the Broadway Pub and Brew and see what they've got brewing for So we're here with Kareem at Broadway Brew in Troy, New York to talk to him about how he got started in his own business. Hi, thanks for meeting with us today. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about when were you bitten by the entrepreneurial bug? Well, I would say it probably started in, uh, I think, sixth grade when I went to Tamarack. I used to go to Sam's Club and buy gumballs uh -huh. at like a uh, discount rate. And then I would go to school and I would sell, sell them for double the amount that I used to buy them at Sam's Club for. So you're kind of born with this this entrepreneurial bug, Ben. Yeah, I was doing that at a very young age. Sixth or seventh grade, I started doing that. Very cool. What made you want to start your own restaurant brew pub? Well, I always wanted to open a restaurant and a bar. This is kind of like a restaurant, a bar, and a nightclub. So mm -hmm. I always wanted to open one, and I wanted to treat people the way I always wanted to be treated when I walked into a restaurant mm -hmm. or any type of atmosphere. So Very cool. And yeah. how long ago did you open? We opened about five months ago now. Wow, brand new. Yeah, very, and, very new. We're learning things, a lot. How are things going? Things are doing very good. What are your goals and aspirations for the business? Well, we want to just grow bigger and bigger. We want to turn this room that we're actually in right now, we want to turn this into like a high-end Vegas style lounge. Yep. You know, and just get more people in here. See, the, the, it's a block in downtown Troy. Yep. And it's a nice atmosphere. We have good people. We have good food. We have good drinks. Yeah, I, I can tell the atmosphere. I've got the live music in the ground. I've got some nice beers. Thank you. you. Can't go wrong with that. It's yeah. fantastic. Do you have any advice for someone looking to start their own business in the food or beverage industry? Well, for any type of business, it really takes 110% uh, dedication and effort. I come from a real estate background. I've had okay. my real estate license for eight years now, but I've had my own real estate company for about three years. Okay. So, and I used to think real estate was hard until. I opened a restaurant. Yeah. Restaurant is 10 times harder than real estate. Right, right. So, you know, if you want to do something, you know, I would say do it big. And of course, you're going to make mistakes, but you have to also think ahead financially, you know, what's going to happen, uh, you know, if you need more money six months down the road or uh, anything can come up. You, right. just, you just have to be prepared. Right. What are some of the accomplishments you would like to mention? We actually just did the uh, Troy Chowder Fest the other day, and we won for our best veggie chowder, which was wow. our corn chowder. Great, it sounds yeah, it was delicious. Good. There was about, I think there was about 30 to 40,000 people who went to the Chowder Festival. Wow. It's a huge event that's, in Troy every year. That's huge, and so yeah. that probably gave you guys a lot of exposure, which is awesome. It did, awesome. yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's fun. Downtown yeah. Troy is definitely improving. Are you a member of any of the local chambers? I am. We're part of the Rensselaer County Chamber of Commerce, okay, great. which is a, uh, it's great. It's a lot, it's fun to be uh, involved in things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's kind of fun when you, if you see a chamber member come in or you visit one of exactly. their businesses, it's, an, yeah. it's nice to have that camaraderie with they others. They support us. We support them. Yep. It's nice. Yep. Absolutely. Are there any fun, interesting or unique stories you've encountered since being in business? Interesting, funny or unique. I want to think of something good. Well, I uh, we have open mic night every okay. Tuesday. Well, that's always interesting, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> 
And I, I have gone up and told a few jokes, and I actually sang once, and that oh is boy. extremely hard. So if you ever hear anyone telling jokes or anyone singing... Why do you sing for us on camera yeah, tonight? No, no, I'm okay. <laughs> I think I'll pass tonight, yeah. But thank you, though. But it's, yeah, it's very hard. Telling jokes is one thing, but singing is even harder. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine yeah, that. I mean, so. I don't, it doesn't matter how many drinks I have, you won't see me on an open yeah. mic night. I think I was stage. so bad at telling jokes, people left just to make me feel right. good. Right. So. Oh, we'll, we'll encourage Exactly, yeah. exactly. Hey, yeah. You, got, you had the guts to do it, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the first step. Yeah, but that's we have, awesome. We have something going on every night here. We have, we have DJs, we have uh, bands come in, we have Beatles tributes, we have uh, Rolling Stone tributes. Great. We have uh, Salsa and Latin night every oh, Thursday fun. night. That's a lot of fun. We, typically, we give a uh, free dance lesson at 9 o'clock every Thursday. That is so Kind of cool. to get people in to start off the night. Um, that's so much, so much fun. And, yeah. you know, a lot of places don't do things like that. Yeah. So I kind of like that that's unique and different. It's good to give back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I love that. Now, I know you guys do a lot of food, but you also have a lot of cool beers and stuff. Is we there do. Any, what kind of beer would you recommend? if you were going to come in here and, uh, and I actually well we have on tap we have 16 beers on tap okay some of my favorites are a uh, switchback Davidson IPA mm -hmm. uh, we have a really good uh, beer that's made out of apples called angry orchard that's yep. a very good beer that's interesting and one beer personally that I imported actually from Singapore that I used to drink in Thailand a lot when I was over there is called Tiger Beer, which is a very good beer. Ooh, yeah. that sounds really unique. Very so cool. So I actually brought that out, brought that here from overseas. Nice. Yeah. Well, let's head on over to the bar and check out what all the cool kind of beers they have here at Broadway Pub. Broadway brew, that tiger beer was delicious. But now I'm ready for dessert. So let's head on over to Whoopies Are Good in Balsam Spa, New York. Whoopies Are Good have been whipping up Whoopies since 1975 and they decided to open as a business in 2009. For those of you not familiar with what Whoopie Pies are, they're two cake-like cookies with a cream filling. Yes, delicious. At Whoopies Are Good, they combine half buttercream and half marshmallow filling for their Whoopies. I think that sounds pretty excellent. Some of their flavors include the traditional chocolate with the marshmallow filling, cinnamon bun, and whoopee chip. Yes, please. They also offer great holiday flavors like pumpkin pie and harvest apple. Not only that, they're going to top it off because they now offer a whoopee bar. Uh-huh, that's right. Come on in. You get to pick your cake flavor. You get to pick your filling flavor. I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, chocolate peanut butter because I'm going to go for two, two. And then you can pick a topping to have your whoopee rolled in. Are you a chocolate lover? Dip that whoopee in chocolate. That's right, the ultimate decadence. So, let's find out what this whoopee bar is all about. Anne Marie at Whoopies Are Good to talk about how she was bitten by the entrepreneurial bug and how she started Whoopies Are Good. Well, it all started actually before this business, believe it or not. I opened my own massage practice and within a couple of years we started this business. So I'm actually running two businesses. Wow, right that's, now, so. that's quite a bit. Keeps you busy, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me how you came up with the idea for your business name, Whoopies Are Good. We came up with it um, one night just talking. It, it came pretty easy to us. Um, it's kind of a spin on the life is good type of thing. Yep. You know, we, we hope to have like t-shirts and stuff yeah. like that someday, some merchandise, you know, to promote, to promote, you know, because it's a fun product. Absolutely. You know, it's so a we lot could of easily do, do so much with it. Yes. So. so what is your most popular flavor here at Whoopies Are Good? Um, the original is definitely quite popular. You know, it's the most well-known. Okay. So most people want to try it. And what are the what what's the flavor of the original? Um, it's a chocolate cake with a uh, marshmallow uh, vanilla cream filling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds fantastic. Tell me a little bit about what cake flavors and what fillings you offer for your whoopie pies. Well, right now for the fall season, we're offering uh, maple walnut, which okay. is a maple cake with, um, 
with crumbs of walnuts on top and uh, maple cream filling. Mm -hmm. We have a pumpkin pie, which is a pumpkin cake with a pumpkin spice filling. Mm -hmm. And we have a harvest apple, which is an apple cake with uh, an apple cran raisin wow. cream filling. That sounds really, really delicious. Yeah. Do you ever take recommendations for flavors for your whoopie pies? Absolutely. People all the time, you know, come up and tell us, you know, you know, ideas they have and stuff like that. Okay. And, and we can always customize the flavor okay. um, for someone, you know, if they order, you know, a large enough quality up quantity, obviously we can't just make one. Right. But if they wanted to order, say, a dozen or so of that particular flavor, we could certainly oh, work with them. Oh, that's great. That's great. Because I noticed you have a lot of different cake flavors and filling flavors. So that's yeah, really nice. Yeah, the possibilities are endless, really. Yeah, that's great. That's so. great. Do you have any recommendations for somebody looking to start their own business? Um, just prepared to work long hours, <laughs> be dedicated. You know, it's it's great being your own boss, but you have to stay motivated. Right. Um, absolutely. So you probably have to really love the product that you're absolutely. making. Absolutely. I love what you, what you do. Honestly, like, you know, as much as I love massage, you know, I, I love whoopie pies too. Yeah. So, and it, you know, this is more the fun part. It's great. You know, which I have that creative side. Yeah. As well, so um, whoopies are fun, so and they are. Absolutely. I mean, it's even in the name whoopies. Like, it just is a fun thing to say, you know. So, I was reading online that you only like to use natural and local ingredients. Do you think that makes for a better product? Definitely, I think you know, especially nowadays, it's rare you can find a product that doesn't have preservatives and artificial things in it, you know. And this is a treat, which it's you know. Yeah, it's a sweet, but it's it's still on the healthier side because it eliminates all those factors. Right. And, you know, it's it's a, just a, health, a healthier alternative for kids. Right. Tell me about some of the celebrities that got to taste your whoopie pies. About a month or so ago, we did uh, get asked to do the Emmy Awards for uh -huh. the News and Documentary Emmys. Um, and that That's was down exciting. in New York City. We had to make 800 individually wrapped and boxed whoopie pies. That's a lot of work. How long did that, that take? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was just the two of us, so you know, it, it, you know, we worked some long hours that yeah. week, definitely. <laughs> that's, that's worth it, though. Yeah. Absolutely. Who are some of the people that got to try your whoopie pies? Um, Larry King. Okay. Uh, he was uh, given the Lifetime Achievement Award, as well as um, most of the evening news mm -hmm. anchors um, and uh, the Today Show. Wow, that's yeah. so cool. So your whoopies are famous. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I love that. Yep. Tell me about your whoopie bar and how you came up with the idea. Um, you know, I think it's something that we came about through, uh, like, wedding shows and stuff we've done. Mm -hmm. You know, different ideas for, you know, events and, you know, whether it's a bridal shower or actual wedding itself. Um, you know, rather than just going with a traditional wedding cake, mm -hmm. it's something that you can offer your guests um, and can be catered. Okay. And they can come up and, you know, select exactly that's what they great. want for their dessert. I think that's a lot of fun too, because people like to pick and choose what they get to make and it, it yeah. kind of makes it a, li a little bit more individualized, which yes. is really nice. Yep. Definitely. And now you offer wedding favors. I see that's fantastic. Yep. Yep. You can, you know, individually box them and, okay. you know, make a special label for you. Right. Not just for weddings, but really any event. Showers, you know, baby showers, showers things yep. that. anniversaries. That's you great. Know, and I see you do cakes and you also do gift baskets as well. Yes. Yeah. And I even see this whole Heart shape whoopie. I yeah. love that. Yeah, for Valentine's Day, we in the quickies we can do um, small heart shapes, which are also great for weddings Definitely. and stuff. Definitely. And then, and then we offer a five-inch, you know, heart-shaped cake. Uh, we did work with a uh, local restaurant last Valentine's Day where they offered it to their to their guests having okay. dinner for Valentine's Day. Very cool. As an option. Where do you sell your whoopie pies besides right here at the Decadent Diva in Balsam Spa? Um, in Balsam Spa, we also sell them at Sanders Meat Market. And then we have about a dozen different businesses throughout uh, Saratoga Springs as well. Which okay, great. You could always go to our website to find out. Find out. Okay, fantastic. So I am itching to try this whoopee bar. Can we head over and see Absolutely. what it's all about? Fantastic. Definitely. Now it's time for me to make my customized whoopee. So tell me, what can I do? Can I do? Should I do chocolate? Should I do vanilla? Um, I, I don't know. I'm we'll thinking vanilla. <laughs> all right, that sounds perfect. Oh my gosh. Let's try vanilla. Okay, we'll start and with the vanilla. And tell me a little bit about some of the fillings I could have in there. Okay, um, well we have uh, our traditional uh, vanilla marshmallow cream filling. Uh huh. Or we can uh, do peanut butter, uh, chocolate, and berry. I think I'm gonna go peanut butter. All right. That sounds awesome. Okay. So now you already have these. These are, now these are. What's the difference between these and a cupcake, or these and a cookie? Um, well, the a, a cookie obviously is just a cookie, where this is two cake-like -like cookies, so okay. consistency is different. Yep. And you put them together with a cream filling in the center. Okay. Um, in a cupcake, the filling goes on top, whoopie pie, filling goes in the middle. Gotcha. Fantastic. So it's much more 
kid friendly. You yeah, you can hold on to it with yeah. your hands. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I think it's so much fun. <laughs> yes. So, All so right. this is your filling. Yeah. So this is our our base filling, which okay. is like a marshmallow buttercream yep. filling. Um, I mean, you start with those two things, and that's you can't go wrong. Yes, and you said you wanted peanut butter, yes, correct? Okay, yes. Okay, so we're going to just take some all-natural peanut butter, butter. Okay. no preservatives or anything in this. We're just going to take a little bit of peanut butter and add it to our base. Oh, so you add it to, I understand. See, I thought you were just going to put peanut butter right on there. No, nope, Very cool. nope, we're going to mix it up. Okay. That looks great. Now, is it hard to come up with a filling um, recipe for this, or I mean, so it sounds like the marshmallow and um, and cream filling is kind of unique to you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, a traditional whoopie pies are made, you know, with marshmallow. Okay. Uh, but you know, our little twist on it is we made it, you know, butter buttercream yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, So uh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And then if you wanted, we could add some uh, actual peanut crumbs. Oh yeah, we're gonna kick it up a couple notches with okay. some uh, peanuts. Awesome. Oh my gosh, it's getting better already. Sounds so good. All right. I love this whoopee bar. I love that I can make my own customized whoopee. Absolutely. You just start, you know, if you've got any customers that come in, you can start like naming them after the, the customer if you've got a popular <laughs> combo or something. All right. And then um, as an additional treat, yes. we do have some other uh, toppings. We okay. could roll it in. I mean, we can obviously do peanuts. Yep. Um, we could do chocolate chips, or we have uh, our whoopee crumbs. Okay, I'm thinking. Which is our chocolate cake. I think chocolate chip is a good way to go. Chocolate chip? Yeah, all right. You can't combine chocolate and peanut butter and, you know, with that a bad result. All so. right. Delicious. Let's get some chocolate chips in there. Kids must love this because they can come in and they can just pick anything they want for their whoopie pie. Absolutely. That's so much fun. You know, and this, you know, this is something great they could do for birthday parties. <laughs> yep. You know, just do a whoopie bar. Yeah, it's great. Kids and know. adults. I mean, who doesn't love a good whoopie? So there is your own custom Ooh. whoopie pie. Thank you so <laughs> much. You're oh. very welcome. Wow, there's a lot of weight to this whoopie pie. This <laughs> is no joke. Um, okay, I gotta taste it. Oh my goodness. I am like so excited right now. Mm-hmm. Mm Amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> could probably use a glass of milk. The cake is moist. Oh yeah. Mm. I'm licking my fingers. The filling is rich, and those chocolate chips really add that extra little bout of chocolate. It's awesome. I think that I can make my own customized whoopie, but with the chocolate one as well. Absolutely. All right, now I've tried my fun flavors of whoopie pie. Now let's try something a little bit more traditional. Okay, so we're gonna start with the chocolate cake this time. All righty. And I'm thinking let's go with the traditional marshmallow buttercream filling for that one. Okay. That sounds really good. You know, it's kind of like the chocolate chip cookie or the cheese pizza, you know? Like just the original mm -hmm. is sometimes the best one. And then I'm thinking maybe rolling it in your um, whoopie crumbs. Okay. Which are, these, you now these are crumbs from, from whoopie pies, right? All right. Oh, it smells delicious. Oh my gosh, yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Oh, Are the whoopee crumbs popular too? Um, yeah. I mean, I always thought they would be great if you made a cheesecake. Yeah, you know, and definitely. And use this as the crumb instead of your traditional graham cracker would be delicious. That would be good. Yeah, because you know, you get bored with the same old, same old. So Absolutely. You get to change it up a little bit. That's great. And, all right. All right, here we go. The there traditional go. whoopies are good, whoopie pie. All right, moment of truth. Mmm. Wow. wow. The chocolate cake is so rich. That filling is exceptional. And I love the crumbs around the outside. It really gives it that little punch. Mmm. Whoopies aren't good. good. Whoopies are great. This place is awesome. You definitely are going to want to get down here and check out all their whoopie pies and even come down and make your own customized whoopie pie. How much fun. Bring the kids, order some for the holidays. You're not going to want to miss out on whoopies are good here at Balsam Spa. Today we're at Lori's Gluten-Free Goodness in Scotia, New York. Lori's was born out of a need for great gluten-free products at a really reasonable price. 
After being diagnosed with celiac disease about 10 years ago, then finding out her son also suffered from the same condition, Lori set out to find great recipes that she could make and sell to other people who suffered from the same conditions. So here we are two years later checking out Lori's gluten-free goodness. So let's head on inside and see what it's all about. So I'm here with Lori at Lori's Gluten-Free Goodness, and I just wanted to find out a little bit about this wonderful bakery, and just tell me a little bit about when you were bitten by the entrepreneurial bug. Um, about three years ago. Okay. I was working, and um, I left that job, and I decided um, to just start bake. I, I always did bake my own stuff, but I figured, you know, I thought it tasted pretty good, and I tried to, you know, get other people to see if they were interested in, you know, purchasing it. Okay. Um, my son and my oldest son um, is also was diagnosed um, probably four years ago with celiac disease, mm -hmm. and I would make my bread and ship it down to him to Long Island. That's where he lives. And, nice. You know, I would do that, and he would say, "Oh, it's so good, mom. You should sell this." You know, so. So that's really kind of how Lori's gluten-free goodness was yes, born by yes. getting the diagnosis and yes. you having amazing baked goods and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now, what would your advice be for someone else maybe looking to start their own business or maybe even something with gluten-free baking? Um, uh, you, you need a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, money is always helpful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, um, but you know, it's, it's, if your heart is into it yep. and your desire to do this and you really want to you know, this is really your passion, then mm -hmm. you should go ahead and do it. Right. Don't don't stop. Don't let anybody, you know, say, oh, no, you can't do this, or, you know, you, you'll never make it. If you're, it's really in your heart to do it, then right. I absolutely recommend going ahead and doing it. And what's the process of making something gluten-free versus something that's not baked as a gluten-free product? It's a lot harder to make <laughs> it gluten-free. Is it? Yes, and why, it is. Do you have the to use texture, some products? Or? Um, yes. Uh, regular use of course you use the wheat flour okay um gluten-free we use white rice flour we use a lot of starches tapioca mm -hmm. you know corn um potato i use a little millet you know millet okay. flour and it's a heavier flour mm -hmm. so you got to be really careful because a lot of gluten-free stuff is very dense you know mm -hmm and it's really heavy. So. Does it change baking times or anything absolutely. like that? It does. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, I bet you I baked 30, 40 breads before I could get one to stand up, <laughs> you know, because they all <laughs> So a lot of trial and error oh, and really perfecting your recipes yes, there. Yes, and that's how we came. We had a lot of breadcrumbs. If I don't like gluten-free products, would I still be interested in having something that might be gluten-free? We have a lot of customers that come in. Um, as a matter of fact, we did the Pizza Wars in Schenectady. Mm -hmm. um, and that sounds, sounds like fun. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a ball. Um, and I had a couple of girls came in about a month ago and bought pizza crust. Mm -hmm. And you know, we sell a lot of it, so was not. I was like, okay, you can have pizza crust. Yeah. And um, she was like, we're not gluten free, but we tried your pizza at the Pizza War, and we go to on um, Fifth and Fifty all the time. That's to buy your crust. Right. You know, they're spending more money on it, but they like it. Right. And that's why. So a lot of our, not a lot, but there's a lot of people that come in here that mm. aren't gluten-free. Right. That will come in here just to purchase. Have you encountered any funny, interesting, or unique stories since being in business? This lady um, wanted some panucci fudge. Mm -hmm. I didn't, that's, I didn't, that's I didn't even favorite. know what panucci fuzz, fudge was. I'd never <sighs> eaten it before, so I was like, all right, got to think about this. And I looked up a regular recipe. Mm -hmm. She's also dairy-free, so that... Adding dairy free is like a even another more, whole, right. That's tough. So uh, I I wound up making her her first batch of panucci fudge was like yeah it was okay. Yeah. But the second one she was like you got it. That's she fantastic. bought the whole entire thing of fudge. She loved it. Now are you making fudge too or is that I do. Thing I, by request, you know, no, I, I'll do it by request. Pretty okay. much anything by request. If people want something, okay. they'll call me up. I'll attempt to do it. Oh, that's great. You know, that's so. really nice. Because yeah, I mean, you never hear some of these things, and then you get to maybe add some things to the menu too. Yeah, which I, is great. I originally was just gonna start off with a couple of things. You know loaf of bread, white bread, and a yep. couple of muffins, and it's grown tremendously. That's great. That's been, <laughs> and you even have some prepackaged items too, like yes, like cheese crackers and things like that, so people come in and buy them and take them home for dinner parties or whatever yes. and enjoy them at home. Yes, I, I, I did that because 
you know, my kids like the cheese crackers, and yep. they would buy cheese its all the time, and I would sit there and say, oh, I wish I had some. These look really good. <laughs> I wish I could take a bite of that. And so I did those, and um, people love them. I always sample them. Yep. And uh, the graham crackers, so people can have s'mores. Mm -hmm. We've done a, um, last year at Christmas, we raffled off a uh, gluten-free graham cracker, uh, a like a gingerbread house, you know, nice. and, make them the graham and, and I've, I've read that hot dog buns and graham crackers are tough to get in gluten free. Yeah. So that's great that you guys make these kind of rare products. That's yes. excellent. Where else can your items be purchased besides right here in Scotia, New York? In Scotia, you, we, you can purchase the product at Fifth and Fifty Pizzeria. Mm -hmm. um, they sell just the pizza crust, the shells with their sauce, of course. And then Beneventos on Freeman mm -hmm. Bridge Road. Um, they also sell the um, French bread as the uh, like a hero a soul and we get gluten free sandwiches. Um, in Albany, uh, Just Me Pizzeria sells the pizza crust mm -hmm. and Taste uh, Restaurant sells the dinner rolls and you know little sub sandwiches also. Oh nice. Um, and then in uh, Manhattan we're now supplying uh, G Free NYC. Okay. Um, and also, uh, they buy a variety of stuff because they have like a, a a whole food store, like like a natural food store, mm -hmm. and um, Satai Hotel is also buying our breads. So, have you guys won any awards or accolades? It's being in business. Uh, fifth and Fifty displayed our gluten-free pizza, and he won overall. So, the specialty pizza was my gluten-free pizza. That's bus, fantastic! So. I love that a gluten-free product is winner of that too. I love that. So, what are some of your goals and aspirations for Lori's Gluten-Free? Well, we're going to be moving. Okay. So, um, we'll be able to, you know, supply more places with our product mm -hmm. um, eventually I would like to have a little small cafe just for breakfast and lunch that'd be nice that's too, that's yeah. all I want to do my, yep. my uh, my younger son went to school for culinary arts perfect so, yeah so he can keep it in the family that's right that's yes. great what item on the menu really represents Lori's gluten-free I have to say the first thing is the bread uh-huh but the second are these uh, carrot cakes the carrot cakes yes, the carrot and can we see how you make these and what goes in the process of sure. making these delicious gluten-free carrot cakes <laughs> we sure can. so let's see how Lori makes this wonderful gluten-free carrot cake okay so what are you doing you're just pouring some of the the mix into the to the mixer at this point or? yes I'm just gonna take the carrot cake mix okay and just mix, mix it up a little bit fantastic that looks good. And what goes into the mix? Some carrots, brown sugar, butter, things like that? Yes, um, some canola oil okay. and all that good stuff. Yeah. Sugar, yep. cinnamon. Nice. Um, we take our carrots and we um, peel whole, whole carrots. I don't use the the carrots that are in the little individual right. bags. So because cut them up fresh yourself. And cut them up. And I, I try to get them at the farmer's markets too, too so they're really fresh. So they're really fresh yes. and local. I really want them fresh and local. Yes. I, that's yep. probably yep. the big, big yep. difference in terms of the taste mm -hmm. and things like After that. After we... Take the carrot cake out of the cookies down, and we will scoop it into. So, is this a specific tin that you use, or I like the jumbos because everybody jumbos. likes the jumbo muffins. Okay, so it's like a so jumbo we'll, muffin tin. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll take a little Just couple a little of scoops. Fantastic we'll, little ice cream scooper. I like it because oh, then, yeah. you know we get the same amount in every one. It's perfectly measured. Yep. Wow. Oh my gosh, the batter alone looks amazing. <laughs> Just, just eat that. You could. <laughs> <laughs> you could eat it straight from. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, these look good. Yeah. And I love carrot cake this time of year too. It kind of represents everything fall with the cinnamon. I, the I don't put any. I don't put any nuts or uh, raisins in unless people actually ask me for it. Okay. Because you know I don't want. Some people have allergies to certain things. Absolutely. You know. So we try to. We try to. You know. Really accommodate everybody. We do. Yeah. We do. That's very nice. Now, are these dairy dairy free as well? They are dairy free. No wow. dairy in in the frosting or in the um, uh, carrot cake itself. That's amazing. Oh. It's probably tough to find a dairy free, gluten free. Um, it is, and, and product. after we uh, bake these up, we'll let you taste them. And you oh, I can't wait yourself. to try it. They look amazing. All right. Fantastic. So then you pop these in the oven, and we how long do you We pop them in the oven them? for like three minutes. Minutes. Okay. They take a little longer than a regular cupcake. Yep. You know, they, they're you know carrot cakes are heavy. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. Um, Fantastic. Well, let's get them in the oven. So you're gonna pop these in the oven for about 30 minutes. Yes, we are. Wow, I cannot wait to see the final product. So. The wonderful carrot cakes have just come out of the oven, they've cooled, and now they have this wonderful dairy-free frosting, and I get to taste them. I'm so excited. They look amazing. And look at the cute little carrot on top. 
I just love these. Wow, they have some nice weight to them too. I am so excited to try this. And I have a napkin because I'll probably need that anyway. <laughs> I tend to be a little messy. So these carrots are so cute on top. I love these. All right, here it is. Mm -hmm. Those are exceptional. Mm. The spices in there are amazing. You could tell me that this is full fat, full dairy, full, full gluten, and I could not even taste the difference. They are so delicious. You definitely want to get down to Lori's Gluten Free. Not only try these amazing carrot cakes, but all of the awesome products that she's got. Cookies, muffins, biscottis, bagels, you name it, you can get it here. And definitely pick up a carrot cake. They are awesome. Wow, I had such a great time at Lori's Gluten Free. The carrot cake here was exceptional. And even if you're not gluten free or you don't have celiac disease, trying their food here is so excellent. Their cakes, their cookies, their muffins, their biscotti, everything was so delicious. And you know what that carrot cake's gonna go really, really well with? The cinnamon mud latte at Virgil's house in downtown Saratoga Springs. So let's head on over and check out what Virgil's house is all about. Today we're at Virgil's house in beautiful downtown Saratoga Springs, but this is no ordinary cafe. Uh-uh. No cell phones and no laptops allowed. That's right. People are encouraged to come in, sit down, play a board game like Monopoly or Scrabble, put together a puzzle, or just enjoy the company of the person they came with without all those annoying dings from a cell phone. As the owner Kathleen likes to call it, this is Cathland. So let's head on inside and check out what Cathland is all about. Let's go. So we're here with Kathleen, the owner of Virgil's House, who's obviously the queen of Virgil's House. So Kathleen, when were you bitten by the entrepreneurial bug? Um, I really wasn't bitten by the bug. I had an idea. I had to open a game room, a um, place where people could go and gather and, and play Monopoly and do puzzles and play cards because I'm a game freak. And over the years it evolved and when I realized that we had to make money doing it, we chose to do it around a cafe style, a bistro style, where people could have coffee and sandwiches, food, and wine and beer we thought would be nice so people could come in the evening and yep. not have to be in a bar or a restaurant. And uh, it all just kind of, over 12 short years, <laughs> morphed into this. <laughs> Fantastic. And when did you start, when did you actually open the doors for Virgil's House? Uh, June 2007. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, in this high tech, crazy world of ours where we're fast paced and our cell phones are dinging all the time and we always have our laptops with us, what made you start a cafe where no cell phones or no laptops are yeah. allowed? Um, we, I worked for uh, Cellular One, Singular Wireless, AT&T, through all those transitions yep. uh, for 17 years. and. I just had it. I mean, I just got to the point where I just couldn't look at one more Blackberry and yes. watch one more person answer her phone, phone in the parking lot, on the floor, you know, juggle this thing, you know, on the phone, and register on the phone. Oh, uh, you know, if we were talking right now, I'd answer my phone and start talking. I mean, right. It's frustrating. So, yeah. So I think it was more of a pendulum swing where I went from that never ending, you know, you're on call 24 hours a day, yep. world to forget it. It's all gone. Go yep. to it somewhere else. I love the fact that you like to recycle and a lot of the items in the area are from different places. I know, I know you mentioned the storage unit in Craigslist. Tell me a little bit about, you know, why you like to recycle and what that's all about. In the beginning, I collected. I actually had a storage room that I rented and I had, you know, a garage sale, antique shops, mm -hmm. um, Craigslist, yep. uh, donations, giveaways. So I collected and hoarded, and even now, some of the stuff I look around and I think, I've never seen that before. <laughs> Maybe somebody now, dropped it off they for do. you. <laughs> uh, they do. They bring things in. They bring books. We just got somebody donate 10 of the best puzzles I've ever seen. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. And I like that reuse. You know, I, I think there's, if we stopped manufacturing right this very second, I think there'd be plenty of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in the world. world. You know, so. Absolutely. Trying to place some value on not, not make things throw away and disposable. Yep, and I think that's fantastic, and I love that. I love yeah. that. And I love that fact that you said that people could come and trade things, too. Yeah. So if I had a puzzle yeah. and I was like, well, yep. I really want to do that oh, horse puzzle, that. I could trade it out. Oh, my God. Three, that's uh, fantastic. Three pictures left last week. We've gotten people want mugs. Yeah, it is cool. That's really cool. Lot. Very good. If you, if you had any advice for somebody looking to start their own business in the food or beverage industry, what would your advice be? My father was in the bar business and restaurant. Uh -huh. and I, my um, first husband, his family was in the restaurant business and retail. And 
I waitress for years, coffee shop. I felt like I had a good solid base. Yep. And because I felt like I had a good solid base, I did not seek the advice of a seasoned restaurant person. Mm -hmm. Just from the basic part of setting up the kitchen or what the layout should be and planning for growth. And I think had I spoken to a few people that were in the restaurant business for years, mm -hmm. that would have made a lot more sense. Yeah. You know, because yep. I had to learn the very, very, very hard way yep. of just not anticipating. And it, I don't care how long, long you work in a restaurant until you actually are behind the scenes and funding it and yep. in that 24 hours a day, you have absolutely no idea. Right. And I cooked and I waitressed and I bartended and all that. Yep. And but until you're really the owner and the, the yeah. business, yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 So I, I would understand say, that. you know, seek advice. Seek as much advice, advice as possible. Get a mentor. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. What is the one item on the menu that really screams Virgil's house? the cinnamon bun latte oh my gosh and it is a cinnamon bun in a cup it's that heavenly. sounds amazing can yeah. we see how it's made yes fantastic can. let's go try that wonderful cinnamon bun latte let's go so princess forever kathleen is going to show us how to make this <laughs> cinnamon bun latte all right let's see how all it's right. done all right start out with a so Starting out already with two shot glasses. <laughs> yes, so I'm going to set that. Grab the pitcher. Start. We start with cold pitcher, cold milk. And into the milk, we add our secret cinnamon bun recipe. This is fantastic. Cinnamon it really latte. is. It's wow. like cocoa powder. Especially this time of year. Yeah, it is. Fantastic. Steam in the milk. This is where the magic happens, That's Jennifer. It. <laughs> well, you really can't combine espresso, milk, cinnamon, and get a bad result. No. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's a fantastic. cinnamon bun latte, it's awesome. Creamy. Creamy right. and delicious. All right. I can see myself coming in here every day trying to start my day we with have something a woman, like this. Can I tell you, we have a woman that gets a cinnamon bun latte every single day, and she's been doing it for three years. Wow. Three years every day. That's fantastic. Without fail. You know what? That's a look for my own heart. Oh my God, God it's amazing. Wow, right. look at that. That looks amazing. So I cannot wait to try that. I made a little extra for your crew. Thank you so much. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh, it looks like a liquid cinnamon bun. All right, now I get to try this amazing cinnamon bun latte. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. <laughs> Literally, it's a liquid cinnamon bun in a mug. You have got to get down to Virgil's house and try this. It is exciting. This place is fantastic. You get awesome lattes like the cinnamon bun latte, a pumpkin pie latte. You come down and get sandwiches or just come down and enjoy the company of the person you came with without all those annoying cell phone dings. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.